When I'm showing people the concept of the histogram and how to read the histogram and how, how to use it to interpret how bright your photo is, I will often get asked at some point, well, what should the histogram look like? Now, just a super quick review. Remember that the histogram is a chart that uh, basically takes every little pixel, and this is a histogram here, takes every little pixel in your picture. Your picture is made up of millions of pixels, little dots, and it measures the brightness of each of those pixels. And then it, it plots that pixel on a graph here. And so, um, you know, when there's a lot of bright pixels, they start to stack up and you get a big spike. And when there's uh, just a few of these pixels, well, you just get like a little, a, a little spike there, not a great big one. Anyway, you can check out my, my video on how to read a histogram. But people, people wonder, well, histograms can look so different from each other. Like, for example, look at the top right of the screen. And as I go through these pictures, the histograms change. They look a lot different from each other, completely different in some cases. How should a histogram look? Well, there are no good or bad histograms. There's no right or wrong. It's... It's just telling you how bright your photo is or how dark your photo is. Now, let, let's compare these two photos right here. Okay, the picture on the right, okay, this is the histogram that you're now seeing. Notice that almost all the pixels in this photo are on the left side of the histogram. This is the dark side of the histogram, the darker pixels get placed on that side of the histogram. The, the brighter pixels end up here. Everything that's kind of in between ends up in the middle. So I want the photo to look like this. I wanted the photo to be very dark so that, this, this, so that the grain, which is backlit by the sun, would actually glow and stand out against the dark background. Now notice there are, you know, other brightness of pixels here, but Hardly any, right? Almost all the pixels in this image are dark. That's exactly how I wanted it to be. Now let's look at the histogram for the picture on the right. It's a much brighter photo and look at how the histogram changes. Now all of a sudden we see that there is some darkness or shadow in this photo, um, but there's a lot of stuff that ends up in the middle and then there's you know also some stuff that's a bit brighter as well. This is the brightest region of the photo and it corresponds with roughly with these pixels here. Um, this is the darkest part of the region and it corresponds with the with the darker pixels there and this is the brighter part of the or the, you know sort of the mid the mid tones and it corresponds with these pixels right here. So neither of these histograms or are right or wrong. They're just letting me know in the case of the dark photo it's just letting me know, okay, you got a really dark photo here. And um, in, in the other one, it's, you know, it's letting me know, like, okay, you know, it's, it's actually not super dark. There's some darkness there, but, but there's, uh, there's a lot of other stuff too. Now, again, let's look at these three photos, and I think I'll get rid of, I could get rid of either of them. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's, let's look at this, this darker photo first. And notice the histogram. You notice how you have a big spike on the left? Those are the, th that's the darkness. That's this part of the photo here. And then you notice you've got a big spike on the right. That is the bright stuff, the sky and the water. And the stuff that is right furthest toward the edge here is basically the sun. And it's a little bit overexposed. It's kind of gone completely white on me. And that histogram basically lets me know, okay, some of your photo is pretty dark. Are you sure you want it that dark? And some of your photo is super bright. Are you sure you want it super bright? And so when I take a picture and then I look at the picture, I can't always tell for sure how bright or dark it is, but when I enable the histogram on the back of my camera while I'm reviewing my photos, it, it does let me see how bright or dark my photo is. Again, check out the how to read a histogram video if you're not sure about some of this stuff, why you'd use 
a histogram. Um, I explain it all there. Now in this next photo, notice how the histogram changes so much. It's coming. There we go. So the last histogram looked like this. Great big spike over here and a great big spike over there. This histogram looks quite a bit different. This, see, and, and this is the second photo. I took another photo because I thought, I don't know if I actually want it to be so dark. I think I want it to be brighter. And so with my next photo, and I used exposure compensation, again, check out that video to, to find out how to use exposure compensation. I told my camera with exposure compensation to make the next photo brighter and everything shifted over. This big spike here ended up being distributed more toward the middle. And so now I've got some, you know, it's dark along here, it's a little dark over here. That's kind of this area. A lot of this ends up, you know, just right in the middle. And then of course I have this massive spike of white, which is, which is the sky and the water. Again, it just helps me to understand you know, especially when I look at the back of my camera and there's a little bit of glare from the sun and I can't really see the picture very well. This, I, I can see the histogram and, I, and it's letting me know where my photo is at in terms of brightness. And it's going to be important because you don't want a photo that's super dark and then you think you're going to brighten it with editing because what often happens when you brighten a really dark photo is that you you end up with a lot of grain and grit and stuff. So watch as I um, brighten this. You can, you can see some of the graininess there. You can see how the photo starts to break down. If I wanted the photo to be this bright, I should have got it that way in the beginning. Now let's look at this one here. We just got a couple left. And again, we see these two spikes on the side. And so this great big dark spike here is all of this land. And I said, I'm fine with that. I wanted a silhouette kind of shot. I didn't necessarily want it to fall into total blackness, which if, if all those pixels were right up against the left edge there, it would have fallen into blackness. And I didn't want it to be black necessarily, but I did want it to be very dark. And then Notice how there are nothing but a handful of, of really bright pixels, which is essentially this right here. And almost everything else is, is right here. So there is, there is some, you know, quite brightness. The water is pretty bright here. Um, you know, a bit of the sky is bright, but a, a, whole, a whole bunch of it just ends up uh, in the middle here. Okay, let's, let's look at one last photo. And I really want you to get the sense that there's no right or wrong about a histogram. A high contrast histogram is going to have a dark spike on the left and a bright spike on the right. And um, now look at this histogram where there are no, there's no extreme spikes here. Uh, meaning that there's, it's not like there's a big spike here and a big spike here and very little in the middle. What we have instead is something like a mountain range that works its way up and then works its way down more gradually. And as you can tell, this is not a high contrast photo. What we do have is, you know, some darker stuff, and that's basically the hat and the gown. We have um, not a whole lot of brighter stuff, but kind of in this range is a bit brighter. That's more or less the face, the hair, and then a whole lot of stuff in the middle, which is essentially the background and, and there we go. None of these histograms are right or wrong. They all look very different. Some of them look like a, kind of like a mountain range uh, or, or a pyramid shape. Some of them look like, uh, like a valley, a couple of peaks on either side and a valley in the middle. Uh, some of them are a bit of a spike and a little bit of a mountain range. And they're all just clues to how bright and dark certain parts of your photo are. It's important to not get your photo too dark and then think you're going to brighten it later with editing because you will end up with a low quality photo. If you realize that your photo was too dark to begin with, snap another photo, use exposure compensation, snap another picture and get it brighter. And you know, you can really help, uh, you can really tell by looking at your histogram 
how dark and how bright things are. 